How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be concluding the story of the Burly Bros with the events of the Tournament of Power. I know that this series has been one of my most successful ever since we started it over a year ago. But now, it's finally time to wrap this story up and give an ending to the Brolies. We weren't able to hit the like goal of 450 likes last time, but we got kinda close, so since we're in the ballpark, I think we're good for another part and the ending for this story. As always, huge shout out to all of my amazing patrons for all of your support, as you guys really help to keep this channel going. With all of that out of the way, let's conclude this series. Goku has been itching for a good fight for years now. The last good one he had was against Beerus in Battle of Gods, as every threat that has shown up here has been taken care of by the Brolies, and he wants to finally have a good fight himself. He's been able to tap into so much godly power, but without anybody to test it out on, he's not able to use it to its fullest capabilities. Goku goes off to Zeno to ask about the tournament of power, as in canon, and as in canon, Zeno decides to do it. Of course, with there not being a future Zeno, there is a need for an exhibition match, and universes can right away search for the fighters. Universe 7 is pretty pissed at Goku for putting them all in danger like this, but it at least gives them a chance to survive, so they go along with it. Gathering the 10 fighters isn't really that hard, as they have plenty of people as their go-tos. Frieza and Roshi are replaced with Broly and Bio, so they have their full team pretty quickly this time, as the only one they needed to track down was Android 17. With the team all set, they go off to join the tournament. For the most part in this tournament, things really wouldn't change, as Goku and Vegeta normally would have been weaker without the Black Arc, but since they've been training with the Broly Bros for these years, that would more than make up for it, and here they would actually be stronger than they were in canon so they could probably deal with those who try to fight them better than originally. Frost wouldn't instantly go for Krillin and Tien as he didn't come up with a plan with Frieza, so Frost might be able to stay in this tournament for a little while longer, but I'm pretty sure one of the warriors in Universe 7 could take him out pretty easily. Gohan is stronger than in Canada through his training with Broly and Paragus, and while he doesn't have the ultimate form right now, he still has an abnormally high power level in Super Saiyan 2, which is bordering on Super Saiyan 3. Think of Gohan Super Saiyan 2 here as the same power that future Trunks had in the Black Arc, where you can have some kind of Super Saiyan 3 power in Super Saiyan 2. Hit wouldn't focus on Goku here, but mainly on getting his revenge against Bio. Hit has been training to get some kind of power to take Bio out in a tournament, and managed to achieve that. With trapping Bio in a time lag, and being able to push him out before he can transform into his Bio Broly form. Even with Bio trapped into a time lag, it's not a one-on-one -on -one fight, so Broly would most likely come and try to help his brother and hold off Hit. And even if Broly got trapped in a time lag as well, if Jiren was able to easily exploit it, I'm pretty sure that Broly would be able to as well, and could work with Bio to try and easily take down Hit. If Hit couldn't really take on Bio by himself, I doubt he could be able to take on both brothers when they're going against him. So, Hit is eliminated. All of the fodder members are taken care of as normal, and the next main obstacle of the tournament are the Universe 6 Saiyans. Though, if you remember in Part 6, Kaba never learned how to become a Super Saiyan here, since Goku never transformed into one during that tournament, and Bio technically did, but he became Bio Broly, which isn't really a typical Super Saiyan form, so Kaba never really got a taste for it for himself. Meaning, Khalifla wouldn't have gotten the form either, and her and Kaba would most likely be knocked out pretty easily. The Khalifla knocked out though, this unlocks Kale's rage, and she transforms into her Berserker state, which catches Broly off guard. There's somebody else out there besides his actual brother who can achieve a state like this? He realizes that Kale has no control of it, just like how he and his brother used to. So, he transforms to his own legendary state to combat her, and try and get her to control this power. With Broly distracting Kale, a lot of the people she knocked out originally would stay in a little longer, but would still be knocked out eventually by other people. Goku and Jiren would still fight, but with Goku stronger here, he doesn't get bullied as bad as he did originally. He would still need to resort to Spirit Bomb though, and just like in canon, would achieve Ultra Instinct and try and take on Jiren, which is exactly the kind of power he wanted to get in the tournament. The whole tournament arena is being torn apart with Broly fighting Kale and Goku fighting Jiren, and it's really impressing the Omni King, who is enjoying every second of this. Broly is a lot more powerful than Kale, so while her power keeps growing like his does, he can knock her back down and have the complete edge in this fight. Kale wasn't as resistant to Broly's talks as Z was, and unlike Z, Kale isn't purely evil, and eventually through Broly's kind words and a nice beatdown, she's able to gain some sort of mastery in her berserker form, just like she achieved in the show. Kale is surprised with her new power, and Broly is really happy to see that his talks actually worked for once. He tried really hard to help his brother for years, 
and his talks never worked as his brother never listened. But now with Kale, she actually listened to him and was able to fully control her rage, which is what Broly always hoped would happen for his brother. Being able to help Kale really meant a lot for him. The two would have a friendly fight afterward, with Broly of course taking the victory, but saying that he would really like to fight Kale again. That way, they can work on trying to get this form down pat. Kale says she would like that, as she's eliminated from the tournament. Broly looks in sadness as Universe 6 is erased, but makes it his vow that Universe 7 will win this tournament and bring the universes back. Hey everybody, sorry to interrupt the video, but guess what? I'm moving up into world of sponsorships. This video is sponsored by Fandomian, who sells some really cool anime and manga merch, and a bunch of other cool merch for some pretty cool prices. If you want to get some cool outfits and a bunch of other stuff for an even lower price, then make sure to click the link in the description down below and put in discount code DAMON for 5% off your order. Again, that's code DAMON for 5% off of your order. Hopefully, you won't regret your purchases. Now, let's get back to the video. Goku vs. Jiren is a lot different in this case, as Goku is a lot more powerful in his Ultra Instinct state than in canon, and can actually do a lot of damage to hit while only being in his omen form. The other pride troopers can't really help as they got knocked out like fodder, and Topu can't really stand against a much more powerful Vegeta, and Bio if he goes in there to help Vegeta fight. Vegeta wouldn't achieve blue evolution here, as there really isn't much of a challenge that requires him to do so, as Goku is doing a pretty good job of dealing with Jiren by himself. While Goku is doing much better in Omen, it's still not quite enough as his body isn't used to this power yet, and the others need to step in to help him. Bio goes first, hoping that his strikes will hurt Jiren enough to get rid of him, but Jiren is able to push him back just by bursts of ki alone, and can power through Bio while touching him. So, just like that, Bio is eliminated. Broly then goes into battle Jiren. Broly's battle with Jiren is one that Broly seems to have the advantage in, as Jiren is pretty worn down from fighting Ultra Instinct Goku. But, in the end, since Goku is a lot more powerful here, he's able to use Ultra Instinct just enough to fight Jiren back alongside Broly, and Universe 11 Strongest goes out just like that. With there being a lot of Universe 7 warriors left, Universe 7 wins the tournament. Since Goku is technically the main winner here as he landed a finishing blow on Jiren, he gets to wish on the Super Dragon Balls, and wishes for all of the universes that were erased to be brought back. Since this is exactly the outcome that Zeno wanted, all of the universes are brought back and the tournament is concluded. Goku was able to get what he wanted, a chance to show off his power and get a brand new power for himself as well. He tells Jiren after that he'll make sure to fight him again, and Jiren says that he'd like that. As he learned with Goku and Broly that fighting together, their teamwork was necessary to win a fight. So, in his universe, he'll make sure to use teamwork a lot more often. With that, all of the universes return to their own. But... Broly says that he wants to travel elsewhere. He tells the other Z-Warriors that he wants to go off and train those Universe 6 Saiyans, as Kale showed promise in her Berserker form, and the other two deserve to learn that Saiyan power for themselves. He says he feels that he needs to do this, for his father's sake and for his brother's sake. The others tell Broly that it would be a great idea for him to go out there, and if Bio is any reference, he's an excellent teacher. Bio agrees to go along with his brother as well, since they should learn through him how to face fighters who aren't exactly normal. Broly and Bio say goodbye to Earth for now, and travel to the planet Sadala thanks to Whis, to train the Universe 6 Saiyans. That way, Broly can finally get the closure from the lessons his father and brother indirectly taught him. From here, we obviously wouldn't have a Broly movie, and without the Broly's around, the Mora arc would, for the most part, play out the same, with only a couple of minor tweaks. With that, we can end this scenario here, with the Broly's off off planet Sadala happily training the Universe 6 Saiyans, with Kale mastering her Berserker power further, and Cobb and Khalifa learning Super Saiyan thanks to the brothers. I think this is a fitting conclusion for now for the Broly Bros, and I hope you guys think so as well. Thank you all so much for joining me in the Broly's adventure, as it was a whole lot of fun to work on from beginning to end. This isn't a goodbye forever, as we still have Granola in the future and a GT edition someday, but this is a goodbye for now. Thank you all so much for watching this series, and if you still need a taste of Broly What Ifs, make sure to visit my channel for plenty of other Broly What Ifs I have going on. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and until we meet again. See you later!